Just recently, Warner Brothers celebrated the 30th anniversary of the 1989 summer blockbuster Batman with a new 4K remaster. Warners have been going through their back catalogue and re-releasing some of their popular titles in 4K, such as Superman, The Matrix and Gremlins is now on the way. The studio has been praised in the past for its strong transfers and remasters, but this new version of Batman has come under scrutiny for its changes in its colour timing and the inclusion of a new Dolby Atmos track, which changes many of the sound effects in the film. Before discussing this new Blu-ray, I want to take a trip down memory lane and chat about my experience with Batman. I was six years old when the film came out 30 years ago. I was desperate to see it, but alas, I was far too young as it was classified at 12, which was a new rating the BBC introduced to create a middle ground from PG to 15 rated movies. So I had to wait till its release on home video and had to get my father to rent it because the 12 rating had not made its way to tape so it was bumped up to a 15. I think like all of us we all got wrapped up in the hype to see the film. You couldn't escape from it. I got the action figures by Toy Biz, I played the video game on the Commodore 64 and NES. I was a massive fan of Batman as the 60s show was still being repeated during the summer holidays and finally getting the chance to see the movie in my own home was a delight. The film even came to TV very quickly, premiering on BBC One for Christmas of 1991. Now this video is not going to be a review of the film itself, I've discussed it before and recently done a commentary track to it. In short, I love the film's visual style. Its production and costume design is fantastic, the score by Danny Elfman is one of my favourites, the performances are great but the story is lacking, and it's not a true interpretation of the Batman comics. I would say Batman Begins is the one to go for for a solid origin tale of Batman, and he is the main focus of that film. Whereas the Batman films of the 90s, the villains took over and Batman became a supporting character in his own franchise. I've had Batman on various formats over the years, VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, Blu-ray and of course now in 4K. So I am very familiar with how the film looks and sounds. I even saw it in 70mm over a year ago at the Prince Charles Cinema in London and it was a surprisingly clean print. So when I put on the 4K version with the added HDR colours, I was a bit shocked to be honest. Gotham no longer had that grey and dark rusty look to it. Now it was highlighted in blue or teal in its colour design. Gotham looked cold and unfamiliar in some ways. The remaster of Terminator 2 had the same issues with the colours all being changed and it's now one of those titles on 4K that goes for £5 because the fans don't want it. The contrast in some shots appear completely blown out as the whites have been pushed up to 11. Skin tones appear too saturated like everyone has been on a two week holiday in Spain. The previous Blu-ray release had a soft picture, it was never overly sharp and the film was in need of a new transfer, so this new version really brings out the detail in the sets and faces of the actors, and it looks amazing in that regard, but the teal colour that has been applied to it makes it a strange experience to watch. Even the crappy cover has teal on it. As mentioned earlier, I saw this in 70mm, and it didn't look like this new Blu-ray. The vivid colours certainly do match on this remaster, however like the Joker's jacket and the interiors of Wayne Manor looked warm and popped off the screen, but the added teal and blown out contrast, that wasn't there. Warners clearly have put some money into this remaster, but I think they should have cleaned up the optical effects and colour corrected some scenes, for example the Joker's jacket is clearly purple, but changes to red near the end for the scene where Batman and Vicky Vale are hanging off the side of the church. This is an error in the optical effects and the use of blue screen. The new Dolby Atmos track has caused the biggest uproar amongst Batman fans, people have even started petitions. Like Superman the movie in 2001, Warner's remastered the sound mix to 5.1 and added new sound effects and improved the dynamic range, basically taking the old 1978 sound mix and modernising it. Some fans liked what they did and others were disappointed because it no longer sounded like it was supposed to. What drove fans mad was that the old mix wasn't included and it wasn't until 2006 that Warner's eventually slapped an old stereo mix on to satisfy the fans. The recent 4K of Superman, Warners actually took the old 70mm Dolby 6 track and put that on the disc, which was a welcome addition. In the case of Batman, they have not included the old Dolby 5.1 mix given to us on the previous DVD and Blu-ray. The only audio track on this new Blu-ray is the new Atmos track, which includes a whole bunch of new sound effects. Some cases effects have been enhanced or replaced entirely. Batman had two very talented Academy Award winners overseeing the effects and the final sound mix back in 1989, but as the film was mixed in the UK at Pinewood and Elstree Studios, the engineers would often use gun sound effects and explosions from existing libraries. Danny Elfman expressed in 1995 how upset he was with the sound mix for Batman, saying Batman was done in England by technicians who didn't care, and the non-caring showed. 
They took three channel stereo and just split it left and right, so at its most powerful moments, it was never more than two thirds there. I'm not putting down England because they have done gorgeous dubs there, but this particular crew elected not to. The explosion effects in Batman, for example, have been used for decades. Movies such as Superman 1 to 3, Aliens, the Bond films, and even going back to Thunderbirds from the 60s, utilize these libraries. So ultimately, you have quite dated sound effects that appear copy and pasted from other movies. I've joked about it before, but I would have never changed anything about its sound because that fundamentally changes the film. So here is a few examples of the original gun sound effects and explosions, followed by the updated sounds. So what do you think? Are the new sound effects better? Does it improve the movie in any way? I personally prefer the old sound effects. I think with the changes, especially with the gun sound effects, it actually messes up the film's artistic style. For example, this world of Batman is like a 1930s slash 40s inspired design that has modern tech retrofitted onto it. The guns the police and Joker's goons use fit that old world aesthetic. Batman, on the other hand, has modern technology, which sounds different like his spear gun and the gauntlet, but with updating how the guns fire and modernizing them, it messes with its intended contrast between old and new. Batman has always had a front heavy sound mix that didn't really push the surround sound channels that much. For this new Atmos mix, you get a better sense of sound surrounding you. You feel more involved with it, which is a step in the right direction. It's very professionally done, I've got to give him credit for that. Danny Elfman's score still shines through and doesn't appear to my ears to have been reduced in its volume, it's still thunderous and loud. The dialogue comes through more clean and audible. There was always one moment near the end when Batman confronts the Joker and says, Excuse me, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Excuse me, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? It always sounded too quiet, often a bit mumbled as he says it very quickly. Now it's very clear on what he says. Excuse me. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Warner Brothers could have saved themselves from any backlash from the fans if they just included the old sound mix as well. Give people options, don't do a George Lucas and take things away, because new doesn't always mean better. To be honest, I'm a big fan of the DTS mix on the old special edition release of Batman on DVD. That sounded far more aggressive than the Dolby HD mix on the regular Blu-ray. Now I have been told Tim Burton supervised this new transfer, Danny Elfman was involved as well as part of the new sound mix, but there's no evidence to suggest that. Nothing mentioned in the press release, of course people on forums and social media claim it's all true, but with nothing to back up their statements. I asked around and everyone goes silent, so I'm not sure who exactly oversaw this release. I don't think the cinema photographer Roger Pratt would have approved these changes, it's not how he lit the movie and graded it. Now what I've done to really reduce the heavy HDR colour boosting which pushes the teal and oranges to the extreme is switching the video output to BT2020. If your player can do that, I would recommend it. I would suggest basically turning the HDR off so it looks more like the original film. It's not identical to how I think it's supposed to look because the teal is inherent in the picture master, but it's far more satisfying. HDR can be really good in some cases, but often what I've come to notice is that it blows out skin tones, makes the image darker, explosions often look too saturated. It's best to watch your favourite movies in pure 4K without the HDR option. 
It saves you from fiddling with the picture settings to get the colours to be more balanced and natural. If you are entirely happy with this new remaster then that's totally fine with me, but as a fan of the film and it's something I grew up on, seeing it like this with the colours adjusted and new sound effects added, it takes away some of that nostalgia. And it doesn't feel the same to be honest. A movie is defined by how it looks and sounds. If you change that then it no longer represents its true intentions. If you are a fan of Batman then you've probably already purchased this movie on 4K, but if you haven't had the chance yet I would suggest keeping hold of your regular Blu-ray for the time being and wait till it drops in price before splashing out £20 for a Blu-ray that you may be disappointed with. I have noticed online that Batman Returns has had some similar adjustments to its picture and sound. I haven't put my money down for the sequels as there is a box set coming out in September. I don't really understand film studios and their obsession with adding teal when remastering their back catalogue of movies. There's no need for it. Keep it how the director wanted, don't change things because there is now an option to do it and it's easy to apply. It may appear to make the movie in the film studio's eyes look more red and cool, but realistically fans just want the films they love looking better and in more detail, having it look closer to how it was shown in the cinemas. It's hard to recommend this disc, it really depends on how fussy you are about the picture and sound, but the feedback the disc has received, despite its strong reviews from many of the Blu-ray review dedicated websites, the fans aren't happy and it's clear people are more disappointed than satisfied with this new version. Plus it doesn't come with any new additional special features, it just ports over all the previous material so there isn't much bang for your buck. If you love this movie, I would suggest sticking to your previous Blu-ray release. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to see more retrospectives and commentaries. Also click on the bell to be notified of the latest reviews. If you want access to exclusive videos and to watch my content a few days before it's on YouTube, you can head on over to my Patreon. Thank you very much.